I'm going to be uh, reading from verse number 27, 27 verse of Numbers 13. Soon we'll be all together again, or we'll start getting together again, or we'll have some kind of semblance of getting back. Uh, you'll hear about it as we start unfolding what's going to happen in the next few weeks. Uh, we'll let you know on that. Verse number 27, this is talking about the spies that had gone to spy out the land of Canaan. Verse 27, and they told him and said, we came unto the land whither thou sentest Moses and surely it floweth with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it we brought back some fruit it was it was it was all all awesome and here we brought back some of it verse 28 nevertheless the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled in very great and moreover we saw the children of Anak, the, the giants there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell in the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to over, overcome it. But the men that went up with him, verse number 31, Numbers chapter 13, the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go against the people, for they are stronger than we, and they brought up an evil report, a negative report, a doubtful report. He says this, he says, Of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it, is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that saw it are, are men of great stature. We saw these, these, these huge men. Verse 33, And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which came of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. I want to talk to you today for this message. It's a matter of perspective. It all comes down to perspective. What are you looking at? What are you focusing on? It's a matter of perspective. Heavenly Father, today we, we ask that you would come and somehow, God, let your word speak to every one of us. Let us grasp, I pray, from your word, and I pray that you speak, encourage, uplift, and God, through all of this, that we are reminded that you are with us, that you are going to never leave us nor forsake us. So we thank you today in the name of Jesus, amen. If you're standing in your home, you may be seated wherever you're at. It's a matter of perspective. Perspective comes in so many forms. If, if my wife today is uh, one year older, and in her mind, that's, that's not great, but yet to a lot of people, she's very young. She's very young to me because I'm quite a bit older than her, and it's none of your business how old. But how about how much you weigh? It's a matter of perspective. There's a lot of people that would love to weigh your weight. And how much money you make. To a lot of people, it's perspective. To a lot of people, you are very wealthy. Or the house that you live in. Some people, some people uh, could, could their, their house is the, the size of, of your bathroom. So it's all a matter of perspective. Is this, is this a, a vacation or is this house arrest since we've been a part of this whole virus? It's all about perspective. And one of the things that can hinder the blessings to come in my life is my perspective. Perspective is your mental view. It's your outlook. It's your attitude towards life. What that could be. The things that you choose to see and the things that you choose not to see, your perspective. Perspective can be built upon faith or it can be built upon fear. Perspective can be built on belief or it can be built on unbelief. 
Your perspective can be built on trust or on distrust. Your perspective can be built on the positive or be built on the negative. Your perspective is the filter with which you see and you look at life. Someone said you don't see the things as they are, you see the things as you are. Because everything you look at, you are looking through your perspective. You're looking at through your filter and through the things that you choose and what you want to and what you don't want to see. An English professor wrote these words on a board behind him and he asked the students to punctuate this sentence. The words were woman without her man is nothing. All of the men chose to write it woman comma without her man comma, is nothing. Yet the women chose to write it this way and punctuate it this way. Sister Trzinski will be proud of English here as we're teaching. Woman, exclamation point, without her, comma, man, is nothing. And that's the perspective, looking at the same thing and seeing completely two different outcomes or different things. There, there was uh, not one man in Israel, as we go back to our story, there's not one man in Israel who would not want and have loved to have been given this assignment that these 12 spies were given. After 400 years of slavery, 12 men are going to be chosen to be a part of this, this, this expedition. And they're going to be the first ones in the history to get into the promised land and see it firsthand, the wells they didn't dig, the houses they didn't build, the vineyards and olive groves that they didn't plant. And so when they, 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 they came back from this, the, maybe it was a, a text message or maybe they got an email from Moses and they said, honey, I've been the one chosen from our tribe to go see it. Maybe I'll get to see the house we live in. Maybe I'll get to see the farm that we're going to get to have. Moses didn't even get to see it yet, but they we're going in to see it. Who wouldn't want to be part of this first team of spies to go in throughout Canaan to check it out? The men who were chosen to, to spy out the land, they were men of renown. They, they were no ordinary men. They were the rulers, one from each of the 12 tribes. Each was recognized by his peers as being a leader. It was a great honor to be chosen by Moses to be a part of this group of the men who would be privileged to bring a firsthand report uh, to the people people of Israel of what the promised land was all about. Do you get the picture? They, they, they were the first ones. They, they had longed for this for years. These men would be able to see and they would be able to explore the land and bring back a report to the entire nation. Moses instructed them to see what the land is like. I want you to bring back a report. you got to see whether people are strong or weak, if there are few or many. What kind of land, what kind of towns they live in. I want you to tell us, are they walled, are they fortified? I want you to see if the soil is is fertile if the soil is poor and, and do your best to bring back some fruit of the land because it was the season of the first ripe grapes. What, what the men did not know, what the spies that were sent did not know was this would be a test more than anything of their perspective of God and his promises more than anything else. And so little did they realize that this assignment would be the defining moment of their life, how they perceived and how they spoke about what they saw on assignment would determine their own destiny and their families. Forty days they were in the land of Canaan viewing and in the abundance of the land that flowed with milk and honey. And 40 days of marveling of the riches of the soil, the abundance of the crop. 40 days of measuring the strength of the cities and the enemy. Now the time has come to give their perspective of the whole thing to the ears of those who wait in great anticipation on their return. And here's what we read that they said. And they told him and said, We came to the land whither thou senteth us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit. We brought an example of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in this land, and the cities are walled and very great. And, and we saw the children of Anak, and it's almost there is a tremble in their voice. It's almost as though they're panicking as they're giving their report. 
Now, you got to notice their perspective. Notice how they magnified the negative and how they said the land eats up the inhabitants and all the people are men of great stature. Do you realize that they didn't see anybody literally get eaten up by the land? That's not what they saw. They did not see anybody literally getting swallowed up by the land. But it seems like sometimes it's just human nature to get caught up in the negative, to allow the bad news to almost consume us and for us to enlarge upon it. Can I get a witness about everything that's been going on lately? And our whole perspective can get skewed by our own perception. There. We saw giants, and they said, and we were as grasshoppers. We saw ourselves as being defeated. Our perspective told us that we did not have a chance. Our perspective told us that we are nothing but grasshoppers in the sight of these people. As we saw ourselves, so they saw us. But thank God. Not everybody saw it that way. And Joshua, the Bible says, we read the son of Dan, he tore his clothes and he spake, the Lord is with us. <laughs> Fear them not. I'm here to remind you today, doesn't matter what perspective the enemy has about today or the negative naysayers today. I want to tell you what Joshua said. The Lord is with us. We have nothing to fear if God is on our side. And the greatest the greatest tragedy of the group that could see what others could not see is they saw the problems more than they saw the promises. I'm here to remind somebody today, and it's sort of been a theme of what's been going on here at the Pentecostals of Cooper City. We started by talking about looking up and the different things. I'm here to ask you, we got to remember to look at the promises more than looking like the problems. we got to keep our eyes on the, pro the promises of God more than on the problems. And there's nothing in biblical record to suggest that Joshua and Caleb were any greater, were any more, more, more powerful or more awesome than the other ten rulers of the tribes of Israel prior to the story. They seemed to be all on the same level. They weren't Superman. Joshua and Caleb, they weren't bigger, stronger, smarter than the others. They just had a different perspective than the others. They had the ability to see. They faced the same giants. They saw the same challenges. They saw the same obstacles. They saw the same problems. But they said, our perspective on this is not defined by how big they are or how big we are, but how big our God is. And the Joshua and Caleb said, we can do this. <laughs> I'm here to remind you, church, that wherever we're at right now, whatever's going on, we can do this. We can do this. It's amazing, isn't it? Each of us see what we choose to want to see. And, and, and the same experience that can catapult Joshua and Caleb into God's hall of fame and cause them to remember with respect and honor throughout all the ages. It's the same scenario that put the other ten into God's nameless hall of shame. Each of us can see what we want to see. We choose to see the problems or the promises. You see, very few people could recite the names of the other ten spies who accompanied Joshua and Caleb without looking in your Bible. Very few of us could actually name them. They are failures. They died in the wilderness over the next 40 years, and all of their family that was over the age of 20 also died. They never lived in the houses. They never drank from the wells. They never got to taste the grapes. They never got to have the milk and honey. They did not receive God's promises. Why? All because they had a bad or a wrong perspective. Instead of looking unto Jesus, they looked into their problem. Instead of lifting up their eyes to the hills towards their help is coming, they kept their eyes downcast and in discouragement. You see, perspective can make all the difference in the world. It can cause the same trial, the same experience, the same situation to bring glory or groaning, fame or shame, fulfillment or failure. All 12 spies witnessed the same events. All 12 spies shared the same experiences. But 10 of them said, the people be strong that dwell in the land. But two said, 
They're nothing to us. Ten of them said, the cities are walled and very great. But two said, let's go up at once and possess it, for we can overtake it. Ten of them said, we, we're not able to go against the people. They're stronger than we. But two of them said, the Lord is with them, and we can fear them not. Ten of them said, we are in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we are in their sight. But two of them said, if the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us to this land as he promised, and he will give it to us and fulfill his promise to his people. There are many more houses there than there are sons of Anak. There's many more vineyards there than there were giants. See, 40 years were wasted because the crowd grasped the negative report more than the positive report. Simply the perspective of 10 men, they only saw the obstacles and not the opportunity. I submit to you that it was a matter of perspective. My greatest enemy is not the devil. It's not some governmental burial in the world. Our greatest enemy, can I just say it this way, is not the coronavirus. There's no devil. There's no spirit of evil. There is no power of darkness that can resist the power of the church. See, it's my perspective that will decide for me whether I have victory or not. It's your perspective that will decide for you and maybe your family whether you live in victory or not. God has a purpose and a plan for this church. Can I say from the very beginning, God knew all this did not take God by surprise. Everything has been coming. He's had it all set up. And I believe, I believe, I believe that God is setting up the church more than ever, faster than ever, quicker than ever to be in a place of greatest revival that we've ever seen before. It's it's been said many times in the last few weeks as, as Christ told in Matthew 16 that he was going to build a church on a rock and even the gates of hell would not be veiled, will prevail against it. And that's what you're a part of and that's what I'm a part of right there in your home or in your car or wherever you're watching. You are part of this church, a glorious church, a victorious church, an overcoming church. And like Brother uh, uh, told us last Sunday night, Brother Woodward, an unstoppable church. And it cannot be defeated. It's a devil chasing church. It's a spirit empowered church. Let me remind somebody today that you're adopted, that you are chosen, that you are powerful, that you are redeemed, that you are blood washed. And let me remind you that you are a child of God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You've been created for victory. You've been called the head and not the tail. You carry the name of Jesus Christ on you. You've been buried with him in baptism. You're not just an average citizen of the world. No, my friend, in fact, you're a citizen of another world. You're an ambassador for Christ. You walk through this life with angels surrounding you. And I've got to remind somebody today that you are the child of a king, that you have a greater purpose, that you have the blood sealed upon your life just like the blood was put on the doorposts in the land of Egypt for the Israelites when that angel of death was going by. So today I have to remind you that my problem is my perspective. My problem is how I view life, how I view myself, and how I view God. Perspective is how I need to grasp the better, the better side of this, the positive side of this. And it really, perspective is my view of myself. It's our best friend or my worst enemy. It's the thing that draws people to us or repels them from us. It's never content until it's expressed. It's, this perception is, is really, it's the librarian of my past. It's the speaker of my present. And it's the prophet of my future. It is all about my perspective. I don't want to get so involved in the challenges that I miss and I have a wrong perspective. So you look at your life, you look at your church, you look at your family, your job. You're, you, you look at the virus today that we're facing and see the problems, the challenges, the reasons to be discouraged. Or you can look at your life, your church, your family, your job, and this virus and see the miracles and how God's powerful work is unfolding and how his plan is unfolding and how his will is going to be accomplished through all of this. God has a plan and God is unfolding his plan before our, our very eyes. So today, I've got to remind somebody, start speaking faith. 
kid, every word of unbelief, every word of doubt, every word of fear out of your vocabulary. The Bible tells us that life and death is in the power of our tongue. And some saw the promised land as a place of sure defeat and sure death. But some saw it as God's gift, the most promising land in all the world. It was all just a matter of perspective. Some looked at the tabernacle in the wilderness and, and they saw nothing but a sorry looking contraption with pallets strung over it and some skins that were on top of it but some saw it as the meeting place of almighty God with mankind it was all a matter of perspective some people saw the giants and some people saw the grapes some looked through the eyes of fear while others looked through the eyes of faith some died in the wilderness and some people saw the promised land it was a matter of perspective. Each of us will live our life by faith or we'll live it by doubt. You, you haven't come this far to become a wilderness dweller. We, we didn't come this far just to gaze over into the promised land. I'm here to tell you that you and I, we choose to believe God. We choose to anticipate the miraculous. We choose to anticipate and see the victory. I choose to praise Him in the face of all of these challenges. I choose to exercise faith. Because faith, remember, is the substance. Hebrews 11, 1 that says, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The faith, 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 faith was the key. God wants us to look through the eyes of faith. It was the, that's how the elders, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, that's how they obtained a good report. It was through faith. And that's how those heroes of the faith survived. Not only survived, but they thrived in the midst of all of their chaos and all of their challenges that they were facing. It's their key was their faith. You see, the devil is viciously attacking the faith of the saints of God. Today, we need to make a choice all over again to believe, to stand on the word, to be able to stand up with eyes of faith and declare that God is on the throne, that my God is with us, that I'm still more than a conqueror. I'm more than victorious through Jesus Christ who loved me. There's a little poem that says, the little shepherd boy armed with only a sling. But he knew how to trust the Lord and how to shout and sing. He did not fear that giant who looked so big and stout. He learned to live by faith. He didn't die by doubt. You see, outlook determines the outcome. The word of God says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your outlook is so extremely important. Your perspective about the church matters. You see, Noah had some neighbors that looked at the ark in disgust. He said, this is an eyesore. Why do you have this big thing in our neighborhood? Get it out of here. It stank like some kind of mammoth outhouse. But Noah looked at the ark as the vehicle that was going to carry him and his family family above the flood Noah saw the ark in a whole different manner it was a matter of perspective that would determine who was going to float and who's going to die who's going to survive and who's going to be lost those that looked at the ark and says it stinks it's obnoxious it's a barnyard I don't like it they all died in the flood. But those that saw the ark as the vehicle of God's deliverance, they were saved. It was a matter of perspective. It's the same thing with the church. The church is God's saving station. And everyone that looks at the church as God's ark of protection during the time of, the, of any trial or tribulation, they are the ones that are going to survive. Now I'm here to remind you today that nothing can derail what God intends to do. God had already given the land to the children of Israel. But their perspective got so skewed, they could not see what God had promised and was doing behind the scenes. And can I just remind you, the land was given to them already. They just had to go in and possess it. And, it, and to get a God's perspective, really, of what God is going to do. And when you do, the giants don't look so big anymore. It's, it's the, the, the statement of that famous writer that said, it's the best of times, and yet it's the worst of times. It all came down to perspective. The scriptures say that the whole earth lieth in wickedness. The Bible says that. But the Bible always says the whole earth is full 
of the glory of the Lord. It's about perspective. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 14. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. That's that's the perspective I want to have. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 21. He says all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. That's the perspective that I want to have. That's the perspective that I want to look at the world and not just see the negative. But I'm going to see that God is at work. I'm going to see that God's unfolding his eternal plan. God is using you and God is using me as a part of this last day church in this last day hour that you and I are living in and to be part of this rapture generation that's going to get out of here a victorious church a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing but a church that the gates of hell have not will not and cannot come against and destroy it's all a matter of perspective two people can be standing in the same place one can say I'm standing in the deepest valley of my life that I've ever been. And the other one can say, I I'm just changing mountaintops. It's all a matter of perspective. See, Joseph was in prison. And, it, and it's easy to look at the negative. It's easy to look at how bad things are. It's easy to get discouraged by what I'm looking around. And I'm in prison and I've done nothing wrong. And here I am for years now in prison. <laughs> Or you can look at it and say, this is the stepping stone. This is the lowest I'm ever going to be in my life. And right now, I'm living the lowest I've ever going to live. And this is going to be the worst day is going to be behind me. Because when I get out of here, I'm going to the palace. I'm going from the prison to the palace. It's all a matter of perspective. And can I just tell you that you have a whole lot more power than you think you have. I think about Job's wife told, told Job, curse God and die. Thankfully, Job understood that if he could curse God and die, that he could bless God and live. If you can curse God and die, I'm here to tell you, you can bless God and live. Nobody has it easy. Nobody has a bit of roses without thorns. It's all a matter of perspective. But the child of God has a perspective that says, I will not give up. You will not win, devil. I will defeat you. My prayers will be answered. My child is coming back. My family is going to be blessed. My night will end. The sun is going to come. And joy will come back in the morning. And What you've been through has not taken God by surprise. The musicians are coming now. What you've been through has not taken God by surprise. God didn't call you to defeat. God didn't call me and you to failure. God did not appoint and call this church, his church, his bride, to defeat. But he called us to be victorious. I'm here to tell you, we're in this to win this. We've got to have a faith attitude. Doubt sees the obstacles. But faith sees the way. Doubt sees the darkest night, but faith sees the day. Doubt dreads to take the next step, but fear soars, but faith soars on high. I, I just have to tell somebody, adjust your perspective. You've been looking at giants. Start looking at the grapes. Start looking at the promises of God. The Bible says this, all things work together for good. All things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to us. That's perspective. That's a perspective to understand that, that God is working all things for my good. Oh, if we could understand in eternity, when we look back in eternity on this day, what perspective will we have looking back on what this day is all about? You remember the Bible where Joseph is facing his brother and says, you know what? The devil meant it for evil, but God. The devil meant this for evil, but God 
turned it for good. I'm here to tell you, your perspective has to, has to change today and grasp at whatever the devil has against you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. I proclaim victory in your life. I proclaim victory in the church. And I'm not talking about the building. And I'm talking about the church globally. I'm talking about the church that's in Brazil. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the church that's in, in the Philippines. I'm talking about the church in Portugal. I'm talking about the church that's in Spain. I'm saying then I declare victory in all of South America in the church around the world. The perspective. So here's how faith perspective speaks. Today, I'm thankful I had a peaceful sleep. I'm thankful I'm alive with possibilities. I'm thankful I have a roof over my head. And if you still have a job, I'm thankful I have a job. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my friends. And above all, I'm thankful that I have God in my life. Paul said this in, in Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 11. Paul said, not that I speak in respect of want. Paul said, but I've learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Paul grasped some incredible, incredible knowledge about life. And Paul went through a whole lot. But Paul had a key that I hope that we can grasp. And that key is no matter where I'm at, I'm decided there. I'm going to be happy. He says, I think myself to be happy. I'm happy. Had a ball. I've just made up my mind. I'm going to be happy. No matter what the circumstance, the situation, wherever I'm at, I will be content in whatever circumstance that I'm going to go through. Romans chapter 8, verse number 18. This is what the Bible says. This is what Paul wrote this. Get this perspective that he had. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present world, if I add it all up, if I get the right perspective and I grasp this in the right context, I reckon that the suffering of this present world are not worthy to be compared. Look at the perspective that Paul had. They're not even worthy to be compared. You can't even put it on the scale. You can't put it on one side of the scale and on the other side of the scale. You can't add it. It's like adding apples and elephants. There's no comparison. He says they're not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. My friends, my brothers, my sisters, my family, my church, that's what I'm talking to you about today. Our perspective, our perspective. See, we can choose to look at our faults, our failures, our past, or we can choose to look at a Savior. Maybe today your, 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 your heart is overwhelmed with guilt. Maybe you... Your heart is overwhelmed with your faults, your failures. Maybe your heart is overwhelmed in conviction of your sin that you're dealing with. But the Bible says that when my heart condemns me, that God is even greater than my heart. God is greater than my heart. He's greater than my failures. He's greater than your failures. And today, here's the perspective. If you can just get your eyes on the cross of Calvary and you can look at the grace of a God that loved you so much that he came to die for your sins. Yes, yes, we were born in sin. Yes, we're shaped in it. Yes, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yes, that's one perspective. But the other side is that God commendeth in Romans 5 and 8 his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us. I'm here to remind somebody today your perspective is going to change to look at the Savior more than your sin and put it under the blood of Jesus. Repent of your sins. Be baptized in the name of Jesus for the washing away of your sins. And then he said he would fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost which is Christ in you and me. Our hope of glory. What a perspective. Lift your hands right there where you're at. Heavenly Father, today, I thank you for the word. I thank you. You said to lift up our eyes.
to look on the fields for they're already white to harvest in other words stop looking at myself my problem start looking at the things that you are already doing you're already preparing the fields you're preparing a harvest you're preparing a future you're setting your church up for victory and I choose to believe it I choose to see it oh God oh God oh we want to see you God oh we want to see you God I want to see victory, God. I choose to see victory. I choose to see victory. I choose to see victory, God. I choose a perspective of faith. I want to look through eyes of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The battle, the battle belongs to the Lord. We're going to see victory. I choose victory.
The battle belongs to the Lord. One thing we do every service here at the Pentecostals of Cooper City is we invite people for a time of prayer after the service because the word has gone forth and the scripture says it will not return void. God has sown a seed of his word into your heart right now and it needs to produce something. We need to respond by faith. And so we have altar calls. And oftentimes these altars are jam-packed with people and many others standing in their pews, some kneeling down, some standing. And it's not unusual to see even somebody on their face before the Lord weeping and, and seeking God's face. And where you are right now, you can kneel down at your couch, your chair, right where you are. Why not respond by faith? This word is for you. This word is for you so that your heart would be lifted up so that your eyes would look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. God is your answer. His name is a strong and mighty tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. You can find peace today. You can find hope today. You can find forgiveness right now. You can find deliverance from those haunting thoughts of the past. That depression that you felt this morning when you woke up. That is not of God. For God's spirit is life. It is liberty. It is freedom. Through his blood, through his cross, through his death and his burial and his resurrection. Why don't you just reach out to him? Open up your heart to the Lord. Let that perspective be one that has God in view that is based on the reality of the truth of his word not based on your own imaginations your own thoughts the fears of this world the negativity of this life but we see things through the lens of the word of the lord and we give our hearts to him let's reach out to him right now right where you are close your eyes you can lift up your hands Reach out to him. Jesus, our Lord, our master, we submit ourselves to you. We receive this word as direction for our lives. We stand with those who stood by faith, with Joshua, with Caleb, and with all of those from the church of the living God who by faith, have pleased you jesus forgive us of our sins forgive us of our failings forgive us lord for embracing all of those thoughts of defeat all of those thoughts of quitting all of those thoughts of uh, blaming others and and uh, feelings of total loss and hopelessness and despair but our faith is in the promise of God our hope is that blessed hope that the church possesses today Lord we look for your intervention in our lives we look to eternity with you we look for miracles and healing and help right now in the name of Jesus Christ there may be somebody out there right now who realizes that you need the Lord in your life and you're asking God to forgive you and you believe the gospel and you want to take that next step. The Bible says, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. The scripture says, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
The Bible is very clear that when you believe and you've repented, that baptism, being born of water and being born of spirit is that next step. So we invite you to respond by calling the church, connecting with us, and we will be here to baptize you. We'll take every precaution, but we're going to immerse you in water in the name of Jesus Christ. And when you are baptized, the Bible is very clear, you are baptized into his death. You are buried with him by baptism. And we will baptize you in the name that will set you free. In fact, right now, you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in your living room. God can fill you. Close your eyes. Reach out by faith. Begin to praise Him. Go ahead. Praise Him. That's the Spirit of the Lord that you're experiencing right now. Let it happen. Let it happen. That's God. That's the Holy Ghost that was promised. Let it come. Let it come. Parents, lay hands on your children right now. Go ahead. Pray for them. Children, worship the Lord. Students, young people, worship the Lord. Let God touch you. Let God move on you right now. If you need healing, He's here. It's by your His stripes that you are healed. It is by the cross. Let him touch your body right now. Jesus, move upon the hearts, the minds, the bodies of your people. Lord, touch those who are lost. Jesus, be here. Jesus, move. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Prayer warriors, altar workers, pray from where you are right now. For those in other homes, your prayers can move upon them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's deliverance. There's healing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. You are more than a conqueror. We will never quit. The church is victorious by the blood, by the cross, by his resurrection. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let the spirit move right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a walk of faith. Believe in Him. Believe His Word. His promises are yea. And they are amen. He comes. Praise God. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for joining with many people around the world. We're moving forward. These are the last days, and that's not all negative. But God said he would pour out of his spirit in the last days. Expect great things to happen. Expect the church to make inroads into places and homes and lives and countries that had closed doors. He said that he would open doors that no man would close and he would close doors that no man would open. Amen. The work of God is moving forward. Thy kingdom come, Lord, and thy will be done in your life, in your life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you just thank the Lord? You are dismissed, but not from the presence of the Lord. In Jesus' name.